Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, whatever times on you are in, Jesus is Lord. Prophet John Hagar here. We continue further with our 14 days of prophetic recovery. And we are dealing with the mystery of honor and dishonor. What honor does and what dishonor does to an individual, even in the body of Christ, who are looking forward to God interrupting their lives with a blessing or dealing with the issues in their lives. One of the key fundamental things that I've learned and I've been taught is honor. The price of dishonor is too much to bear and to pay. You can ask Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli. Eli himself, the priest, paid the highest price. The next character in the line of dishonor or paying the price for that is Saul. King Saul. And so arise to your rest and be blessed by our prayers as we glory in your. Father, we thank you for this session, O oh God. Meet us at the point of our need, correct, mold, shape us, O oh God, in the name of the Lord. We decree liberty. We decree freedom. We speak ears that can hear, eyes that can see, heart that can perceive the matters in the king's business. Father, we ask that we will not be at ease in Zion. The Holy Ghost will help us to shape our minds and our mindset. Let the entrance of the word bring light and understanding to the simple today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Rejected on the account of dishonor. Rejected on the account of dishonor. Now, the sons of Eli, 1 Samuel chapter 2. I'm going to read 12, 17, 22, and 36 verses. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. Verse 17. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. They caused men to dishonor God. Those two sons of Belial, the sons of Eli, they made an entire congregation not to pay attention. To the verdict or to the ordinance that have been set as especially as regards worship two levels two young people who manifested dishonor to an extent that an entire congregation bought into their behavior that's a powerful statement that's a powerful reality there now eli was very old and he had heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. How they lay with women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle. So they did not just take from the offering bag. They did not just break protocols in the kingdom. They did not just dishonor priesthood. They did not just, you know, go against ordinances as it regards worship and as it regards conduct. They, they went ahead and picked on women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And then God begins to speak and says, Now it will come to pass that every man that is left in thine house shall come to crouch for bread. They will begin to beg. God is dealing with dishonor in his own house. And he says, Of Eli, you and your house, you are going to be beggars when I begin to bring the wealth which I will bring into the house of Israel there shall not be an old man in your house to enjoy the wealth they will die young they will not see the wealth is the price of dishonor and so they were rejected by their account on the account of dishonor first Samuel 2 and 30 wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, indeed I said you and your house you should walk before me forever but now I, de I decree now be it far from me, because those who honor me, I shall honor. That is by recap the scriptures we've been dealing with. 
God begins to pick up the conversation with Samuel, a young teenage boy, and his first assignment in the prophetic office is to be told how his mentor, his father of faith as it were, would die and what God will do. It is explicit judgment. And this is a teenage novice in the prophetic, yet so, you know, uh, uh, innocent and, and open to the ministry of God. Well, he begins to speak and he says, Samuel, verse 12, in the day that I will perform the things that I have spoken against Eli, all the things that I have spoken concerning his house, chapter 3, verse 12, when I will begin, I will also make an end. The price of dishonor, ladies and gentlemen, as I told you before, is too high. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. He, the patriarch, knoweth. Fathers should teach their children to honor God. Parents should teach their children to honor the ordinances of God. They cannot just come around the presence of God and make a mockery of church and make a mockery of service and make a mockery of things that are in awe in God because the judgment is too harsh. He says he, because his sons have made themselves vile and he restrained them not. His the responsibility was with Eli to tell them and to shut them out of the, out of the presence of congregations and out of the priesthood and out of the you know the holy of holies not really but the holy place and the outside the gate the entry of the tabernacle he did not restrain them so therefore i have sworn unto the house of eli that the iniquity of eli's house shall not be purged not with sacrifice not with an offering in other words when god begins to judge dishonor and that is why i am in now when God judges dishonor, not a sacrifice, not an offering, we are in a generation that think they can buy their way into an anointing by an offering, buy their way into a dimension by a seed. That can happen. Impartation is possible. It has been done. It is biblical. It is true. But you cannot buy into an office and into an anointing into a dimension when you are living in dishonor when you have shown dishonor because the scripture declared there your level of dishonor cannot be purged not with sacrifice not with an offering it is high price listen when someone shows dishonor say to the office of the president huh you can be able to see how they get handled or mal handled for that matter in jurisdictions different from Kenya, different from the United States. You may have the freedom of choice, I mean the freedom of speech and speak every. but there are certain levels when you get to you will not be arrested. You will be mal handled when you're getting arrested. You will be taken maybe to the deepest darkest one cube, cubit measurement of a of a, of, a, of a room and be taken there for days paying the price of dishonor. There's a bunch of men and women should be in the book of Matthew and Jesus came to his own city and the scripture declared they showed him dishonor so he did not do mighty works there because Matthew 13, 54 and 58 and when he come to his own city or to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and this mighty works? Is this not a carpenter's son, dishonor? Number one, goes into the place of identity because they can't identify with the level of exemption, uh, ex, uh, uh, excellence and results and power and the dynamic that God has, de has, has relayed on your life. The number one thing is to discredit whence you came from. This is not a carpenter's son. is not the mother, Mary, brethren, James, Joseph, and Simeon, and, 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 and uh, Simon, and Judas. 
and his sisters. So Jesus and sisters, though they are never mentioned, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence has this man all these things? From whence? Who does he think he is? Where has he gotten this level of exemption? Where has he gotten this level of education? Where has he gotten this level of influence? Where has he gotten? Who does he know? And they were offended in him. And Jesus said, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not mighty, did not do, or he did not many mighty works there. And he did not many mighty works there because of their dishonor. The word unbelief there contextualized is the word dishonor. Sir, men and women can sit in church today and I'm talking to you. Can, can, and, and, and I want to contextualize this to 21st century believer you and I can sit up in church and the word of God and the anointing is passing through right, left, center, landing on, on grounds and, and, and hearts which are full of dishonor. You full of dishonor and you believe God for breakthroughs. It will never happen. You will be in charge for far too long. Far too long. You will be rejected on the account of dishonor. I will show you a mystery here. Ananias and Sapphira. Because of the ministry that is getting uh, to be, you know, full blown. Peter being the apostle, the head of the, the church then. After uh, uh, James, the brother of the Lord, and Paul still coming on, on his way to getting saved and getting delivered up. Paul Peter is still the apostle. And all of a sudden should be an anointing moved in that service. And men began to not just call upon the name of the Lord, but began to give out of themselves and out of their uh, 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 wealth and out of the need they gather together and they would distribute to the needy in the house and in the especially like in a city like this and in the country uh, 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 in a generation and should be what I want to say is in the midst of the pandemic like this people are sharing and even in the church or in, in, in families and in the nation distributions are getting by or they are getting out to people well in the context of the church they gather together and the power of God should have moved so powerfully that day that Ananias and Sapphira went home and they made a choice to themselves that we shall, we shall sell the field and bring it to the feet of the apostles. Well, they sold it. And before they would bring everything to the feet of the apostle, they began to have a conversation, the wife and the husband, as it regards, should we give the whole of this? No, we should take a part and keep it aside and then go and take this all and say it is all. Peter, paraphrasing quickly, he said to them, he said to the husband, hey, is this all? This? He said it is all. He said you have lied to the Holy Ghost because before you brought it, was it not yours? He said it was yours. Before you would make the vow to give, was it not yours? Yes, you would have changed the vow before you made the vow. In other words, you would have bought the uh, sold the land and keep the all instead of taking a part and you have already vowed you will give all. You've lied to the Holy Ghost. Dishonor for promise, for ordinances. Dishonor, you don't value your word. You don't value the word you speak before God or before men. It curtails the move of God fundamentally in the life of a believer because then God cannot be able to trust you. He said of Abraham, I know Abraham is my friend. He will teach his children my ordinance. He would teach his children my ordinance. Why? Because Abraham had value. He had honor for God. He would build, he will litter the, the entire country the O of the Chaldeans, he moved out. He went to the land that God had begun to show him. And in all his pilgrimage, he would litter the entire country. 
in his pilgrimage with altars. He would lift up altars before God. He would cry out to God as it regards the covenant he has with him. He will sacrifice in Bethel. He will sacrifice in another place. He, would, he will lift up sacrifices and altars everywhere. No wonder the man had dominion in the entire Middle East. Why? Because he had honor for the God he was walking with. Samuel is given an instruction here. What I'm about to do in Israel, every ear that shall hear, when I judge the house of Eli because of dishonor, their ear shall tingle. In other words, I am teaching an entire generation a lesson through this family. And Saul, King Saul, when he came to the fore, remember what I said earlier, the atmosphere of Israel was already contaminated with dishonor for God. So they demanded a king not knowing the kind of price that Saul will put them to pay. Saul had a systemic honor issue. He had a honor issue since day one, and I will show it to you even in the coming in the coming uh, in the coming series or in the coming episode. Hear me. As it regards the body of Christ. The scripture which I read to you before, 1 Samuel verses, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30, part B says, I will honor they that honor me and despise, I mean those who despise me, I shall lightly esteem. There are many people filled with the Holy Spirit, yes, going to heaven, yes, but they are lightly esteemed in life, have no result whatsoever. If you track in their life carefully, you would find in one way or another they showed dishonor to a man of God, to a woman of God, to an ordinance of God, to a law of God. They showed dishonor to their parents, to someone higher than them. And I have definite, I have already given you the definition of what honor is. Hear me, the price of dishonor is too high. You cannot afford it. You'd rather operate in the spirit of honor. You will rather, up if you want to recover all, even in the midst of this pandemic, with all economic meltdown and projections from all sorts of quarters, if you want God to come into town and begin to put you in Goshen, in the midst of, show honor, sir, show honor, man. And you begin by showing honor to God. Honor God with your life. Honor God with your substance. There are no stingy people like believers, like Christians. Stingy, blessed of God, can't give nothing. They think the church needs to beg for them and actually come to the place of convincing them why they should give, why they should honor God with their substance and faithful in their tithing and faithful with their vows. And they, they can't be able to understand that that is the key to opening up wealth. And that is the key to bringing them to a Rehoboth, to a large place. That is the key. Become stingy. You have no honor for God or for the things of God. And then there is another bunch that can give their way to dishonor. They don't care about really giving. They will give. But they will never attend to the matters of the heartbeat of God. So they buy their way out of church. Buy their way out of ministry. Buy their way out of salvation buy their way out of many other things. Your mama wants to see you, you send money. No, he didn't want the money. She didn't want the money. She wants to see you. Your daddy calls. She wa he wants to talk to you. He didn't say send him pesa. You did the right thing, but at the wrong time. Context of honor. There are levels of honor and hierarchies of individuals and entities by rank. You need to show honor to them. And God has placed systems that need to be honored in the land such that you don't have to pray a prayer for God to answer. You will honor a system that he has put in place and that system will answer your prayer. Abraham is not a person, a personality. He's not a human being. Abraham represents a system. And that is why for every person born again, the scripture declared now that we are heirs together with Christ, we are not just born again, but we are co-heirs together with him. Why? 
because of Abraham our father yes he is a system David is a system that is why when Solomon messed up all around and every he God spared his life because of his servant for my servant's sake for David my servant's sake I will he would prefer to kill but he would take that judgment ahead because of David David was a system Elijah was not a prophet he was a system that is why he shows up in the New Testament in the form of John the Baptist systems if you don't have the sight to see the ear to hear and the sight to see and to be able to understand who you're talking to you will think and this honor is what I told you trivialize you will trivialize a matrix a life form a life form and the price of that is too high as you will begin to see in the life of King Saul this honoring God is costly it has generational implications. Yes, sir. It has generational implications. He said there will be none left in the house of Eli. And whoever will be left there, they'll become a beggar of bread and a beggar of silver. Why? They dishonored and make sacrilege of my offering and of my house and of my sacrifice. God does not play ball with his servants, does not play ball with the congregation, he does not play ball with nations that put him in the place of dishonor or despise him. He will come and judge those nations, judge those nations and you don't have to go further. Just look around nations and see where God has been dishonored and look at their life, look at their lifespan, look at their economy. Look, they might be prospering economically. You might think that that is the key. I mean, you might think that they are, there is no judgment hanging over the... Uh, no. Look deeper. You will see all manner of sicknesses. You will see all manner of issues. You will see all manner of disorders. You will see a lot of oppression. The enemy will be released into an entire nation. Dishonor will trigger disobedience. Disobedience will trigger rebellion. Rebellion will trigger self-will. And eventually self-will will trigger destruction. Don't be in the place of dishonor. Show honor to every life form. From your parents to the law. The law of the land. To spiritual laws. To uh, 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 the kingdom of God. And that is where a lot of this my generation does not know how to show honor for the office and for men and women of God. We think we are equal. We can jest. We can gist. We can put them in jest. We can call them name, plaster their names on social media, mock them, do all manner of things. Dishonor. And that has generational implication. And I will show you by scripture a man, a prophet, who was walking into his uh, into his uh, uh, assignment walking into his assignment and a bunch of 40 young men mocked him mocked him how they said he was bald they mocked the oil they mocked the government they mocked the headship they did not know they would have talked about the feet maybe maybe hands but not the oil not the head because the head is anointed my head shall be anointed with fresh oil and my cup shall run over they mocked his head. The hair or the lack of it represents the glory of God. It headship represents where the anointing lands. It represents government. The head of the house. The head of state. The head of something, something. The head of parastatal. The head of the company, CEO and some. The head. When you mock the head, you go. He cast them in the name of the Lord and a bear came out of nowhere and mauled 40 young men instantly and he went his way the price of dishonor sir is to be cut short instantly you could be living and I will show you other characters in the Bible living but tick tock tick tock the curse is above their head is walking with them daylight whether they move a country whether they migrate whether you 
it doesn't matter it is tiktok it is timing and it will hit you when you are not just fast most vulnerable but when you are at the peak at the height of getting a breakthrough at the height of getting to be married at the height of getting children at the height of being the ceo at the height of making money at the height of influence bam judgment picks you up very critical for the body of Jesus to understand for you to recover and to to get to the place of recovery for you to long for you to get to the place of dominion even in the midst of this pandemic you long for many other things long in thy longing long for honor long to show honor teach yourself on stand up when dignitaries walk to you when your pastor walks to you don't just stand a kimbo there don't just sit yeah show honor greet them show honor it doesn't matter whether they are younger or they are older show honor and if they are older even double honor elders who have paid the price mama daddy uncles people who took you to school you go to the village you don't go visit you don't go say anything you don't carry anything you can't send them money now you've become big you're driving a V8 you're building a four story building you've become everything now you look down on the person should it be ignorant he could be ignorant he never he's never gotten into a plane never flown before but they helped you on your way to greatness on your way when you did not even know you are left from your right dishonor will begin to close doors instantly and you might be walking back to the city with a curse that was never spoken a curse that has been inflicted by action from yourself hear me may the lord give you understanding this is the part 2 of this honor we are going to the part 3 and we are going to deal with king saul rejected on the account of this honor father i decree and declare in the name of the lord release the spirit of honor over our lives over my life over the lives of the people who are watching this tonight this afternoon and this morning may we honor god and the ordinances that you've placed in our lives the government that you've placed upon our shoulders may we not dishonor you with our lives and our choices with our speech and our behavior my god we decree and declare let o oh god god arise in our hearts scatter every root that has been planted inside of our hearts by pain and heart by traumas by church casualty and hurtings of the church from the pulpit even hurtings from family from mama uncle daddy we decree and declare oh god rout out the seed of dishonor that has been caused by many other factors and many things in our lives we decree we are healed by thy word we are healed and made whole by thy word we thank you father Jesus might in it. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Many a host prophet John Haggai say, if it is not God we serve, then we serve nothing at all. Honor God. Show honor where you need to show honor. Be deliberate. Honor God with your substance. Honor God with your life. Honor men and women in all hierarchies of life with your action. and you will be shocked at what god will begin to do in your life amen and amen we love you to life until we see you in the next episode amen